What is it that you must do in order to remain and grow in the kingdom of God? Because the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. And I'm not going to minister with that scripture. I'm just reminding you to say there are many scriptures we can use to to serve as a basis of this question. So uh, the Bible says in Mark chapter 12, verse 28. Then one of the scribes came. One of the scribes. I'm telling you that there are three questions that were asked by three groups of people and all of the three questions were irrelevant. And I want to show you that when people are in the Lord and they are not belonging there and they are not there for a good reason, they are always irrelevant. And having heard them reasoning together. So this guy was listening. He heard Jesus Christ answering a question which was not part of the sermon. He answered it well and the scribes were quieted. And then the number two question was asked, I think, by the Pharisees. They asked about marriages and abuse of women. They were saying, if we were seven siblings and we have one wife and the firstborn get married, and then he dies and he leaves this woman. The second man takes over, takes over. The seventh one takes over. And then now it's time for resurrection. And they were not believing in resurrection. But they are asking a question to take Jesus. They said, when we come back after resurrection, whose wife will this lady be? Why well, not? Jesus was not teaching about marriage and wives and, and resurrection. That is which, this is what you must understand that in every gathering of people, if we don't do assessment, someone is there for wrong reasons. Yeah. Hey. Amen. Hey. And you know why I'm concerned about that? It's because I want every one of us to be there for the right reason. Number two, to also go to heaven. Number three, to be blessed. But if you come to a gathering like this, and your reason and your motive is not godly, you miss out. It's not us who are, who are not benefiting. It's you who's missing out. So today I'm inviting all of you as we answer this question. Can you be here for the right reason? Hello? Amen. Welcome to the right to the right group. This is a group that will never run dry. Amen. When you are on this altar, you will never be thirsty. Amen. You will be quenched. Amen. Yeah, you will drink and be fulfilled. Perceiving that he had answered them well, mm. asked him, mm. which is the first commandment of all? Which is the first commandment of all? This guy, let me clarify you, fellow believers. This guy is asking this question and he knows the answer, but he feels like, can I trick Jesus Christ so that I can be famous? And he thinks he's clever. I guess the scribes are people who are keeping records. Yeah. He's holding the records and he checked the answer. So he just wants to see, how can I trick this man? This man does not know anything. Jesus answered him, mm. the first of all the commandments is, mm. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Jesus is answering, he says, O Israel, listen to me before I tell you the answer to this question. Oh. There is a prerequisite to understanding the answer. He says, for you to understand the answer, there must be something you must know first. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. So in other words, before you go to the answer, so when was the last time you assess yourself? Answer this question. Do I really believe in God Almighty, the only God alone? When you go for driver's license, they say before you start the car, check underneath, around it. Every time you start, you must check under. It's only people who are stealing cars who don't have time to check. They <laughs> enter the car. But if it's your car, according to the driver, learners drivers, they say you inspect the car yourself every time you start. Sometimes if you want to travel longer, you check the oil and the water and the, and the tank. You don't just come in and you go. They say you do it always before you start. In other words, there's no surprise on the road. Because you are dealing with something that you understand. I can tell you that people who are having cars, there is something they do every day on that car. But when last did you do the same to God? Mm. 
When you're looking for a job, now God must now come as if you are the only person alive. Suddenly, God is no longer omnipresent. He's at your place alone. When you are in trouble now, God must just be with you alone. Certain things are personal, God must be with you alone. When God remembers you, you disappear like evaporation. When was the last time you asked yourself this question? What, how, how much I love this God? Do I love him alone? When God says David was a man after his heart, he was this honest. He was honest. So imagine after this honest, tomorrow morning when he wakes up in the morning, he's going to verify, Father God, I love you with all of my heart. Who were bad? Yeah, you know, you know, we're singing very awkward songs. Long time ago, before house music came, and also, and also, and also mama pianos came. You know, we were singing this kind of song, and it kept us going. And I thank God we sang it today. I'm standing here. Amen. Yeah, so you must find a song that keeps you going. In this journey. So Jesus answers and say, I want to give you an answer, scribe. But I want to remind you because there's a struggle that certain people believe in Abraham and Moses. Until even today. So Jesus was very clear. He says, Your answer has got your question has this answer. So God must be allocated. Okay? This question that you are responding to, it also means practically you must not allow anything that belongs to another God to be in your house. If there is a particular tea that you drink when you are in trouble, then that is God. You must peel it off. If there is a particular thing that you put somewhere in secret places of your body, when you are in trouble, you must know that is your God. Yeah. If there is a particular thing that you have hidden somewhere in your in your wardrobe, nobody oh, must see. That is your God. Is if there is something that is hidden in your cell phone, nobody must see. Oh, that okay. is your God. Yeah. Anything that when you think about, you can't be restful. That is your God. You must be able to deal with it. Because it is controlling you. Anything you are afraid of, and it's not God Almighty, that is your God. That if you are sitting here, you say, I must just accept anybody because my years are going forward and that is your God. Is your God. You worship Mshat. You will be abused for time in that marriage. I mean, when you worship Mshat. I'm telling you. Someone can't listen to anybody, but now wait upon the Lord. I think, how can I wait? It's God is your hand, but that is your God. That what you must see. you do to stay in the Lord? And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. This is the answer. You shall love the Lord your God with what? With all, with all of your heart. You must love the Lord your God with the entire heart. And how do you know you love God with all of your heart? When something troubles you to zero, if you run to your aunt, that is your God. You run to your mother, God, God, mama, mama, that's your God. You must change direction. When you are down and out, God must be the first recipient of your down and out. You must go to God and say, Father God. Before you run anywhere, when things are tough, you don't spend money that you have borrowed to go and look for solutions. You go to God with your bankruptcy and say, Father God, people think that I'm this and that and that. And if you can allow them to see that in my life, they will never go to heaven. Have mercy on me. In my nakedness. That is what it means to love God with your heart. Your heart. Number two. With all your soul. With all your soul. Number three. With all your mind. With all your mind. When you don't know the God that 
Jesus said earlier on to say, before I give you the answer, be in God. When you are in trouble, you know what you do? You start to show off your feet. You start to show off your nakedness. Because you need survivor. In the Garden of Eden, the first thing that Adam and Eve suffered was nakedness. When you are not in God, the first thing that you want to show the world is nakedness. You suffer from the highest level of attention seeking disorder. You move around naked because everybody must look at you. You have lost your purpose in life. But when you are in God, you present your heart as a living sacrifice. You present your soul as a living sacrifice. You present your mind as a living sacrifice. You regard your body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. You walk as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You live as a righteousness of the Lord. Nothing matters but God. What must you do to stay in the kingdom of God? You see, you can't fear the person you don't love. You can't serve someone you don't love. That is why the Bible in Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says you can't serve two masters. It says the one will be despised, the other one will be loved. It says may I take it further and say that is why personally I prefer to have one wife because you can't have two. And claim to love both. The other one has authority over the other. So if there are two, who has authority over who? If you've got two wives, one of them is a concubine. And that person knows that they are a concubine. <laughs> Even if you are not married, if you've got two girlfriends, the other one is a concubine. If you've got two, two men, the other one is a concubine. But just decide which one is which. The choice is yours. What must you do to stay in the Lord? Love God with all of your heart. But around there is no magic about it. The day you decide to from today, my life will never be the same again. I'm going to serve God with all of my heart. What happened? I'm saying a minute you love God, automatically you enjoy loving any other human being. You can't be in love. Uh, uh, with, with, with animals to a point that they are superseding human beings. No, you will take care of them. Yeah. The Bible says dominate them, take care of them, subdue them. It didn't say you shall love dogs, you shall love monkeys. You shall, no, you take care of them, you dominate them, you subdue them, you allow them to function and some, some of them you kill and eat. But you can't do that to a human being. <laughs> But when God is not there, you 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 have a dog that you love more than a fellow human being. So the neighbor is not there. When you come to church, you fill your car with dogs, and you pass human beings. <laughs> I mean, you are showing off with you, and now you have gone to another level of disorder. <laughs> when you overflow, when you overflow, you bless animals than you bless human beings. And there's no wrong with having animals. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 1 to 9, before you talk about full armor, it shows you what must be in a family. But you must have God. 
When you have God, your love approach is logical. So you will love your neighbor as you love yourself. Can I tell you, see, none of the four points says you must have one million, you must have two billion, you must have four nations, you must have. No, these things are going to be yours in any way, whether you like it or not. They will be yours. In fact, the book of Isaiah chapter 61 to 64, it says we must be displays of God's splendor. In other words, where you stay eventually, there must be certain things that demonstrate that God has arrived. But those things must not be but those things must not become your God. You must be their God. And it must not really become something surprising. It must be a lifestyle. But you gain that and get there by starting from where you must start. So this year we are entering into another territory. We are saying we are going to stay in the Lord 24 7. When you find us worshipping God, you will experience people who are loving God with all of their hearts, with all of their souls, with all of their minds, with all of their strength. So the scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth, yeah. for there is one God, and there is no other but He. Listen to this guy. He's now showing that he is subscribing to Jesus. He has been beaten ten not. He says, <laughs> now, <"Nah, laughs> <"Nah, laughs> I realize <laughs> you are worth following. <laughs> you, you, now, you now confirmed. Now confirmed. But we've got one God. <laughs> and one else, my dear. And to love him with all the heart, Yes. With all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength. With all the soul, and with all of the strength. And to love one's neighbor as oneself. You see, he has paraphrased the teaching of Jesus Christ in one paragraph. Jesus Christ, in fact, in Mark chapter 12, is teaching about obedience and true worship of God and remaining in Him no matter your status or your social standing. You must remain in the Lord. God will do the rest. The answer to the question I raised to the church is that it is possible even in our lifetime to be hot Christians than go Apostle Paul. The best way to become that we must go and check one thing. How deep is our love for God Almighty? And if the answer is correct, you must find 10 out of 10 on these four points. For example, when you love the Lord with all of your strength, it, if you can stand, it means everything that she does with her hands. Everything she does with her thoughts. Everything she does which brings back some kind of return on investment. God must have a share on such a thing. So that is why in African tradition generally, when you come from Mbombo, for example, <coughs> and you find yourself in Cape Town, you get a job. Long before now, you were supposed to run month end from Cape Town trying to find a way to go to the to, to your place at home and go and present your first salary to your parents. They were supposed to take that to your salary and teach it to drink mkobodi. 
Why don't you stand there and say, God knows, God knows. You don't sleep just because of a boyfriend. You don't sleep. God, you must start to also say, God knows. When you are fired at work, you pray as if you were born in the mountain. Mountains start to have your footsteps. Why don't you stand and say, oh, God knows. God knows. When your mind is sold out to God, you pray without ceasing. You pray until you run away from the vocabulary. You just find yourself going rande kataramanda but what do you say? What do you say? I don't know. I don't know. But when your mind is not sold out to Christ, you analyze everything. Because the mind is a ground for the devil to torment you. When your mind is sold out to Christ, if you need the thing, you remember Job chapter 22 verse 28 Psalm 20 verse 4 You remember Psalm 37 verse 4 When you begin to say Father God Give according to the desires of my heart Provide Jehovah Shabbat Provide Jehovah Nisi Provide Jehovah Elohim You don't care who says what because the mind is no longer yours. It's transformed and it's connected to the Lord. I'm inviting the congregation of God. Let us step up and step in. And begin to say in this season. We are going higher. We are going higher. We are staying in the Lord. Even if there are many narratives against the Lord, we are staying in the Lord. I will love the Lord with all of my heart. And this is the third issue that is a problem. You will see. If you want to see where your heart is, check when you are extremely happy and when you are extremely sad. That's where we will know where your heart is. Especially people who preach. Oh, I can do anything through Christ who strengthens me. Oh. Hey. Uh, and then some, God says, no, I hear you very well. Next week, Tuesday is exams. Flat out. God, which, 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 uh, were you using last week? When you are in the Lord, Job says, I hear you, my friends. The same God you know of my abundance is the same God of my ashes. When you stand up and say, I will minister Jesus in season and out of season. There will come at people who will challenge you, who want you to discourage you and say, how can you minister to ministers and uh, what counselors and what, what, what. You tell them, I'm not ministering to them. God is ministering to them through me. Yes. You must not apologize. When you have the care, when you have the message of the Lord, it doesn't matter whether you are the 11th, the son of Jacob. As long as God has deposited the dream in you, you release it and push it. One day, even the elders will come and beg for food. But that happens when your heart is sold out to God. When your understanding is in Christ, someone comes with persons that are from university and theology. And say, are you still a Christian? 
Don't you know that this thing does not exist? And if you don't know that your mind must be sold out to the Lord, you find yourself sitting next to a serpent being taught wrongly. When you live there, you are stolen. You are being killed. And before you realize, you are, you are, you are destroyed. To begin to say, I'm going to stay. And I'm going to grow. And I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And I will never lack anything good. When you speak to your situation, irrespective of how blossoming your situation is, in the name of Jesus, God is calling us into that space because He wants to bless us. He wants to bless us. Your journey to your destiny has got blessings. When you leave your Egypt, you live with silver and gold. God does not only reward at the end. He allocates even from the beginning. Someone here is about to receive you their allocation. Someone is about to receive their allocation. Can we stand together and start to pray right now? Someone is about to receive their allocation. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 